uh, we derived this highlighted uh, equation, which is a partial differential equation known as Laplace's equation. And it describes the temperature on a, a two-dimensional plate such as, um, you know, a plate. <laughs> so, um, so what we're going to do is we are going to approximate now we can approximate not solutions but differential equations differential equations so this is like there's a, a double there's going to be a double level of approximation we're going to approximate the equation not the solution but actually approximate the equation so for example this would be something like um say say you're trying to solve sine x um equal to e to the well, that's a bad example say equal to log of x well, that doesn't work either it's hard to i have to make this um it's difficult to make this work i, I can't even do it right i'm just going to write down but actually what i end up with is nonsense actually e to the x minus one yeah it's, it's kind of nonsense so what you can do here like if x was, say, you're only interested in a solution where x is close to zero, you could approximate sine with x, because when x is very, very small, sine of x is approximately x, so you get an approximate equation. Now, as it happens, that equation I wrote down is just as difficult to solve, um, but then you could maybe you could approximate e to the x as 1 plus x, and you end up with x equal to zero does actually everything would be a solution. So that doesn't really work. But anyway, it's not something we normally do approximating an equation. And then you solve the approximate equation. Now, as it happens, we're the equation that we approximate with, we're actually only going to solve that approximately. So we're going to approximately solve an approximate equation. So there's going to be errors. Okay. So, um, now, there's kind of an issue related to how we implement this in VBA versus how we do do it. I, I'm actually going to suggest a different grid um, to what's kind of in the notes. So let's take our square plate. Or rectangular plate. The, the thing that has to be square is the, the grid. So... The grid, uh, the, the horizontal and the vertical lines must be equally spread out. So I think I'm going to exaggerate this. I think I need a few more points. But that's struggling to make a square, but so be it. It's supposed to be square grid. So all those are supposed to be squares. So the labeling actually that I think uh, we might use now, it might be, it'll be different because you, you choose the labeling. I mean, it's just a notation, but I, I think what would be best is if we, if we think about you're plotting this in Excel, see all these nodes, you want to plot them into um, cells in VBA and the very top left corner is actually one, one. So that would be the choice there. And then this would be, one two this would be one three etc this would be t two one that's probably the clever um in indexes to use um so kind of what's written here take with a pinch of salt that's probably yeah that's probably what to do so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a, a particular point which i'm just going to call tij now you can of course actually find out that it's uh t4 five something like that we're just going to call it tij okay and let's denote the the ones around it which are supposed to be be equidistant from it so this one is it's the same okay so actually this is i minus one so now it doesn't really matter but it, you know if you think I think something in the VBA lab video I've done is, is it's not wrong, but I kind of said things wrong or I minus one, I said would always be on the left, but in this setup, it's, it's not. So here we're thinking about I has a row number. 
and J as a column number. But that's only really because uh, we're thinking of printing it in Excel. Okay, so similarly, um, this would be TIJ plus one, and this would be T, um, now this would be the next row, same column, and this is the same row, but the previous column. Okay, so yeah. So um, now in terms of the grid now, it's a little bit funny. The points, we can't really talk about delta x, delta y. Now we have that, this width. Uh, now we have to be very careful the way we've done it. It's really, it's like, it, the problem is, right? If you think about the VBA axis and its rows, columns, but that's like y, x rather than x, y. So it's very confusing for us. So I'm going to, um, this point here, i, j, I have to be very careful. Um, I'm just going to say the point i, j. You know what I mean? Okay, because we have to be very, very careful. Like what's the x and what's the y here? We have to be very, very careful. Um, where the temperature is denoted by t, i, j, that's okay. So we've got this thing, um, we can rewrite Laplace's equation. So we would have spoken about this in the previous lecture. This is the next, this is the current, and this is the previous. Now at this stage, we have to make a choice between X and Y, which is simply not ideal. Um, so I think what we were forced to use the weird um, indices, but we have to keep maybe the X axis as the X axis. So. What I'm trying to say is this width here, delta x. This width here, delta y. And they're supposed to be equal. Uh, I think I have to do that. Okay, so we're going to look at the derivative in the, the second derivative in the x direction. Okay, so the formula is going to come out looking slightly different, but at the end it's going to be the same. So, the second derivative of temperature with respect to distance in the x plus the second derivative of the temperature with respect to y is approximated. We can approximate both those second derivatives using next minus current plus previous over delta x and or delta y squared. So for the x one, so you're looking at tij, what is the next temperature? Well, it's tij plus one. That's the next temperature in the x direction. In the x direction, so I have T i j plus one minus twice the current, which is T i j plus the previous. The previous in sense of x is this T i j minus one. So T i j minus one, all divided by delta x squared. Okay. Plus, now do the same for the y direction. So what's the next in terms of the y? Now you'd have to say, uh, it is a bit confusing because we're go up is down as such. But if you're talking about a y, up is the next y. Now if, if, you, if you do it the other way around, it's not wrong. You end up with the same answer however you label it. The labeling isn't important. And whichever choice you make, what's x and what's y, shouldn't be important either. So that's the next point minus twice the current point um, plus the previous point, which is previous is the down below one, i plus one j, all divided by delta y squared. Now, what we want is the sum of the second partial derivatives to equal zero. Now, the thing on the left is equal to zero. So this thing is also approximately zero. And this is what we've done there, is we've approximated, like if we, if we took, maybe said this is equal to zero, and then did an approximate implication that the sum of the second derivatives, um, now I could actually say this is equal to zero, but it's, it's only an approximation. Okay, it's an approximate equation. So I've rewritten the equation as what's called the difference equation. Now, if you multiply both sides by delta x, um, I think you have to multiply by delta x squared, which is the same as delta y squared, you'll end up with this. 
you'll end up with uh, all these things and a minus four tij and you're trying to solve so for example here's one of them at x1 y1 now x1 y1 would correspond possibly it's hard to say no we're just going to say it one one which would be up actually that one doesn't work um say we go at two two um it's it's basically it's it's look it's just the adjacent temperatures so you'd have t one two plus well maybe we'll do it just like it says it three two plus t one two plus t two three plus t um two one minus four times t two two is equal to zero so all that's really saying is the temperature at there's a relationship between temperature T22 and T21, T12, T23, and T32. So there's a relationship there. That's all we're really saying. Okay. And that's oh, a bit more than that. Okay, we'll just leave it there for the time being. So boundary conditions must also be specified so we have a unique solution. If we specify boundary temperatures, temperatures in the edge of the page, we end up with loads of equations and loads of unknowns. So you got like what you have down the bottom there really is um, a, a linear equation. It's like simultaneous equation. So you can solve it. Now, if you actually write it in what's called, if you write it as a, a diagonally dominant system, I think it looks something like careful here now when I write um, 4 and you get loads of minus 1's but where do the minus 1's go is not so important is it minus 1's well, anyway you get 4's along the diagonal now you do get um, a couple of uh, minus 1's around now there can't be that many, say minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, something like that, and then zeros everywhere else. The important thing is that the number on the diagonal is equal to the sum. Um, so we get a bit more here. Sorry, we get uh, so you get a t vector here of temperatures equal to actually the zero vector. Um, So the important thing here is this is what's called diagonally dominant. So the thing on the diagonal, the absolute value of the four is greater than or equal to the sum of the other things in the formula. And when you've a diagonally dominant system, um, it's very, very nice. It's really, really well behaved. And in fact, I don't know if you how much linear systems you know but there's always going to be a unique solution when it's diagonally dominant okay now i think you've done a bit of jacobi matrix methods with uh, bob and now bob's very good and he's far better than me in the computer but i think he overcomplicates jacobi and gauss Seidel. actually all you have to do is you just solve for each of the tij and if you do that you end up with that tij is actually equal to the average of the four adjacent temperatures. And that makes a little bit of sense. So you get Ti minus one J plus Ti plus one J plus Ti J plus one plus Ti J minus one. They're the four temperatures divided by four. Now, where does that formula come from? Uh, look down the bottom of that and solve that uh, 2.2 for Tij. And so what it means is you do not have to remember that previous formula. You just write down the equations that the temperature at a point, at a node, say, is equal to the average temperatures at the adjacent nodes. Simple as that. And as it happens, they're exactly the form that the equations need to take to put them into Jacobi or gauss -Sidel. Now you can speed up 
the Jacobian Gaussdell uh, method, which we will see about. But we we're not going to worry about that um this semester. Okay. Um. So what we want to show is that the fact that the using the finite differences basically just says that the temperature at the point um, should be equal to the average of the four adjacent temperatures, even though it's approximate, it, it's no mistake. Okay, so there's something called um, uh, uh, the mean value property for harmonic functions. Now, a harmonic function is it's just a, you can just think of it as a solution of the Laplace's equation. Like it doesn't have to be temperature. You can take an abstract Laplace equation, just, you know, um, the sum of the second derivative is a zero. And it has the following property that if you take a, a single point, um, and say call this U of X, Y, and take a radius around that point, that the, temperature u x y is actually equal to the average temperature on the boundary so maybe if i call this actually x zero y zero it'll be the average temperature so x y on the circle centered at x y now, how do you find the average of infinitely many uh, things is a bit involved, but basically um, you have to do a line integral. I don't think you've done them yet. Um, well, it's it's something like, I'm not exactly right here, but something like 1 over 2 pi r, r being the radius, and you have a, a line integral. Now, how, uh, well, look, I'm just going to write it abstractly. Um, integrate over the circle. See, you can do a change of variables. There's all kind of messing around. You can do u of x, y um, times, and there might be some kind of that part. I think this is something you look at eventually. It's something like that. But you can actually average on a circle. So, and that, that should make sense. Like, if you think about um, sitting in a room where, you know, there's sources of heat and, source and kind of drafts, your temperature is roughly the average of everything kind of around you. And that's what this is kind of saying. So you can actually do an alternative derivation of Laplace's equation, which would say something like this. So rather than saying that in steady state, heat flux in equals heat flux out of a, a volume element and heat flux is proportional difference in temperature, you could actually take the mean value property as the um, assumption. Okay. And then you could do the following. Because I think the solutions of the Laplace's equation are exactly harmonic functions. So every harmonic function satisfies Laplace's equation. Every solution of Laplace's equation uh, is harmonic. And so you could do it like that. So what you could do instead is um, take a point, which I think we're going to call Tij. Yeah. And then... So the temperature there should be average of a cer uh, average temperature on this. So you can approximate the average. So like think about it, if you have if you want to find the average age of every CIT student, you could take a sample. Um, maybe maybe you could stand outside when the campus was open and look at get the age of the first twenty people that come through a gate or something like that. So you could, and that'll give you an approximation. So similarly, we can sample from the circle by taking these four temperatures. And what we would say is that the temperature, now we probably need some labels here, so we'll call this, this would be the temperature x plus delta x, y. T of ij is the temperature at x, y. This would be same x coordinate as t i j, but the y coordinate would be minus delta y. This one would be same x coordinate, but y plus delta y. And then this one would be um, x minus delta x. So if you just write down that um, tij is equal to 1 over, that's divided by 4, the adjacent temperatures, which I'll just write as t, which can be rewritten as this. It can be rewritten like this. 
And this approximation improves if you take the circle to be smaller and smaller radius. And that's taking delta x and delta y to be small. And what you can show is that, say, this quantity here. Now, what I, I think we had a struggle with this. Well, I had a struggle with this. Look, you can clearly see y is constant. So this would be the partial derivative with respect to x. In other words, y is constant. And in this one, look, x is constant. So this is a partial derivative in the limit as well. So you can actually start with the mean value property and derive the Laplace equation. Okay. Um, so all this analysis, by the way, it follows true for if you want to do in work in three dimensions. So, for example, in three dimensions, I think you have six uh, adjacent temperatures. Now, the reason we derive the equation using heat fluxes is because we also want to ask questions about heat fluxes and also because deriving and um, so writing a differential equation as a difference equation using finite differences, um, you might we're going to want to do that later on. And the mean value property doesn't hold for all partial differential equations. Okay, so we'll look at some examples in the next lecture.